Okay, so you know how sometimes you see pictures of something like a thousand times? Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, whatever. It's the Great Pyramid. Big whoop. Right. But then you actually stand there in the shadow of that thing. It's different. It is totally different. The scale. The you fact know. that it's been standing there for so long. The it, precision. It really hits you. Yeah, you get a real sense of like almost disbelief, you know. How do they do this? It makes you question everything. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And of course, the classic story, the one we all kind of grew up with is, well, it's Pharaoh Khufu's tomb. End of story. Right. Pretty much. But what if, and stick with me here, what if that's only part of it? What if there's a whole other story inside the pyramid, literally, that we're only just starting to understand? That's what makes this so exciting. Totally. And we're not talking speculation here, not just ancient myths or wild theories. We're diving into some hardcore science today. Stuff that's giving us a whole new view from inside the Great Pyramid. That's right. Up until now, most of what we know comes from exploring the parts we can actually get to, plus some older attempts at remote sensing. Right, like poking around with less sophisticated tools. Yeah, pretty much. But now we've got this fascinating study that uses a really cutting-edge technique. It's called Synthetic Aperture Radar Doppler Tomography. Okay, whoa. Sar. Doppler Tomography. <laughs> I'm guessing that's not something Indiana Jones would have used. No, not at all. It's completely non-invasive, which is crucial when you're dealing with a structure as important and as fragile as the Great Pyramid. So no dynamite or secret passageways this time. Right. It's all about using technology to see inside without actually touching anything. And the main goal here is to find hidden stuff, right? I mean, yeah. structural elements that nobody's ever seen before deep inside the pyramid and getting like super detailed images of them. Exactly. There have been other non-invasive techniques used before, things like muon spectroscopy and microgravity surveys. They gave us hints, you know, suggested there might be voids and chambers in there. But the images were blurry, basically. Yeah, kind of like trying to look through fog. This new study aims to give us a crystal clear picture. Okay, so let's talk about this clash between what we thought we knew and what this new research is telling us. We've got the tomb for Khufu theory. That's the classic one. But our sources also mentioned some other more out there possibilities. Resonance devices, acoustic instruments. I mean, those are pretty big leaps, right? They are. And there's a long history of these alternative interpretations. The pyramid is just so complex and massive. It's like, it's almost too perfect to just be a tomb. Right. There's archaeological evidence pointing to the funerary aspect for sure. But people have always wondered if there's more to it. A hidden purpose. Exactly. These alternative ideas might not be mainstream, but they definitely show how much mystery still surrounds the Great Pyramid. And it seems like those older methods of looking inside just couldn't get us the detail we needed to really explore those alternative ideas. Is that right? That's right. They could pick up on anomalies, you know, areas where the density was different, suggesting voids or chambers. But figuring out the exact shape, how big they were, and how they all fit together, that was usually beyond what they could do. And that's where this new approach comes in. Okay, which brings us back to SAR Doppler tomography. <sighs> Help me out here. How does this thing work? I mean, I know SAR is used for imaging the Earth from satellites, but how do you use that to see inside a solid stone pyramid? That's the really clever part. Normal SAR uses radar waves, bounce back from the Earth's surface to create images. But, you know, granite isn't exactly transparent to those waves. Right. So what, they found a way to make radar see through stone? No, not exactly. The real breakthrough was focusing on something way, way more subtle. Micromovements. Micromovements. You're telling me the pyramid is like moving in tiny tiny ways yeah there's always some kind of seismic activity even faint tremors and then there's wind traffic all the everyday hustle and bustle around cairo all of that creates these incredibly small vibrations on the pyramid surface wow i never would have thought of that the researchers realized they could actually capture those movements in the doppler data from the sar imagery so they're basically listening to the echoes of those tiny vibrations to mac out what's inside that's a great way to put it and the tool that makes it all possible is the Cosmo Sky Med satellite system. That rings a bell. Italian, right? Yes. It's a network of satellites that provides super high resolution SAR data. And the study specifically talks about using vertical, vertical polarization, which is a way of sending and receiving the radar waves to get the most sensitive data for this kind of analysis. Pretty high tech stuff. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of visuals, we've got figure A to help us out. It's a single look complex SAR image. What are we seeing here? Okay, so this is basically a radar snapshot of the pyramid, right? I see the overall shape and this yellow line running down the eastern face. 
What's that all about? That yellow line is super important. It's the demographic line of investigation. Think of it like a slice through the pyramid, a specific cross-section where they analyze the internal structure. So that's where they focused all their listening. Exactly. And to actually get information about the depth and location of those micro-movements, they had to use some pretty hardcore analysis techniques. The study mentions Doppler centroid anomalies and something called multichromatic analysis, or MCA. Okay, time for a quick breakdown. What in the world are Doppler centroid anomalies and what's so special about MCA? Well, Doppler centroid anomalies are like little hiccups in the radar signal. They happen because of those tiny movements on the pyramid surface. By measuring those frequency shifts, the researchers can tell where and how much the surface is vibrating. So it's all about picking up on the tiniest of wobbles. Precisely. And then there's MCA, the multichromatic analysis. That helps get rid of any ambiguity in the radar data. So they get a really clear picture of the height or depth of those movements within the structure. It's kind of like using different colors of light to get a more accurate sense of distance. Interesting. So they're taking these minute vibrations captured by this super advanced satellite, running them through some serious analysis and basically creating a 3D map of the pyramids insides along that eastern slice. And this is where we get to the fun part, mm -hmm. the discoveries. Figure B shows us the results, yeah. Right, figure B is like the treasure map. It's the three-dimensional tomographic image showing what they found along that eastern slice. And the cool thing is, it confirms some stuff we already knew was there. Like the big ticket items. Mm -hmm. The king's chamber, the queen's mm -hmm. chamber, and the grand gallery. The study mentions that the king's chamber shows up with these high-intensity signals probably because of its size and the density of all that granite. Exactly. These known structures, they're large, they're dense, so they vibrate differently. And that's what shows up in the image. It's like a check to make sure this new method is working right. We see the king's chamber near the center, the queen's chamber underneath, closer to the top of the pyramid, and the grand gallery connecting them. But then we get to the new discoveries. What are these ascending ramps all about? The eastern and western ones. Where do they fit into the pyramid and what do they look like? So these ramps, they're on the northern side, starting near the ground and sloping upwards. They reach about halfway up the pyramid on the southern side. And they're pretty steep, according to the study. What's really amazing is that their discovery actually supports some of the existing ideas about how the pyramid was built. You're talking about moving those giant blocks, right? Exactly. People have always wondered how they got those multi-ton blocks up there. Ramps would make sense, right? And now we actually see evidence of them inside the structure. So this backs up those theories about construction methods. <sighs> amazing. What else did they find? There's a horizontal corridor, right? This yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It's located pretty high up on the southern side, and the study suggests it connects those two ascending ramps, the eastern and western ones. So it could have been a crucial link during construction, maybe for moving materials across the pyramid, or it could have served some kind of ceremonial purpose after the pyramid was finished. We don't know for sure. A high-level passageway linking those ramps. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then we also have descending ramps. The ones running parallel to the base. Right. There are two of those, one on the east and one on the west. They go underground, and it seems their slope changes as they go deeper. The really interesting thing is that these descending ramps connect to another new discovery, an underground corridor on the northern side. Whoa, a whole underground network. That's unexpected. Tell me more about this northern underground corridor. Okay, so it runs parallel to the northern base, and it has these two things branching off of it, almost like underground tunnels or something. The study calls them underground extrusions. And here's the kicker. They found similar underground structures in other Egyptian pyramids, like the ones at Zaya Ilarion and Sekhemket. So this isn't just a weird quirk of the Great Pyramid. It's a pattern. It could be. It makes you think that underground construction might have been a common element in Egyptian pyramids, maybe for some symbolic reason or as part of a larger architectural plan. Wow. That changes things. Okay, now the study also mentions a complex structure below the northern base. That sounds, well, complicated. What's down there? This is maybe one of the coolest findings. It's got a horizontal part with several offshoots sticking out at right angles. And the researchers noticed that it looks a lot like the vibration absorbing structures used in modern engineering. You know, the kind that help buildings and bridges stay stable. You're saying the ancient Egyptians might have built a giant shock absorber into the pyramid. 
It's possible. It could be that this underground complex was designed to help the pyramid withstand earthquakes or other vibrations. If that's true, then these ancient architects knew a lot more about structural stability than we give them credit for. I mean, that's mind-blowing. It's a whole other level of sophistication. So we've got ramps going up, ramps going down, corridors connecting everything, an underground network, maybe even seismic dampeners. It's way more intricate than just a burial chamber. But there's one more internal discovery. A large void above the Grand Gallery. We already knew there was something there from muon spectroscopy, but this new method gives us a clearer picture. Yeah, that's right. Muon spectroscopy gave us a hint of a void, but SAR Doppler demography gives us a much better idea of its shape. It seems to be kind of like a box, a parallel pipette, and it's connected to other internal structures through sloping corridors. So it's not just an empty space, it's part of this complex interconnected system inside the pyramid. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. Just briefly, the study also mentions an external discovery, this idea that the pyramid might actually have eight sides, not four. Yeah, so they used SAR interferometry for that part, and it seems like each of the four main faces has a very slight inward curve, which effectively makes it eight-sided. It's a really subtle detail, but it could be important for understanding how the pyramid interacted with its environment, you know, things like water management and those theories about ancient water basins around the pyramid. Fascinating. So we've got all these new pieces of the puzzle. How do they change our understanding of the Great Pyramid? What are the big implications here? Well, the first thing is that those internal ramps, they really solidify the theories about how the pyramid was built. Actually, seeing those pathways inside the structure gives us a lot more confidence that they were used to move those massive blocks. Right. It's no longer just a guess. Exactly. And then there's this whole network of chambers and corridors. Mm -hmm. It really makes you wonder about the purpose, doesn't it? Why would you need such a complex internal design if it was just a tomb? The possibility of resonance chambers, the seismic dampeners. It suggests that the pyramid might have been more than just a final resting place. It's like it had a function beyond just being a monument. Yeah, maybe something to do with energy or sound or even water. The study points out that the horizontal corridor is high up, which could have made it a good resonance chamber, amplifying vibrations. And then you've got the underground complex, which might have been designed to absorb vibrations. And what about the eight-sided exterior, the part that might have been for water management? Could that be connected to those internal structures? Could we be looking at some kind of ancient technology that used both water and vibrations? That's a really intriguing question. The study even talks about the granite basin in the king's chamber and that noosh in the queen's chamber. They think those could have been Helmholtz resonators, which amplify certain low frequency sounds. So if you put all that together, the water management aspect, the potential acoustic elements, the vibration stuff, it starts to look like a much more sophisticated and multifunctional structure than we thought. It really challenges the traditional tomb theory. It's like we're seeing hints of advanced ancient technology, maybe even ceremonial uses that we can't even imagine today. And it sounds like this SAR Doppler tomography is giving us much more reliable and detailed information than we've ever had before. So the big takeaway is that this technology is giving us a much clearer picture of what's inside the pyramid, right? Definitely. It's giving us solid evidence of these internal features in a way that previous methods couldn't. It's a whole new chapter in our understanding of this incredible ancient wonder. Okay, so let's recap everything we've learned today. Using this new Sardoppler tomography, we've gotten a glimpse of a whole hidden world inside the Great Pyramid. Ascending and descending ramps. A horizontal corridor connecting them a complex underground structure that might have been a seismic stabilizer, and a large void above the Grand Gallery. And these aren't just random empty spaces. They seem to be part of a very deliberate and intricate design. It suggests that the pyramid was built with a level of sophistication that we're only just beginning to understand. We're talking about potentially earthquake-proof construction thousands of years ago. That's pretty incredible. And the fact that we see similar underground structures in other pyramids makes you think this was part of a larger plan, not just a one-off quirk. It's like they had a blueprint for these pyramids, something that went beyond just being a tomb. And that brings us to a pretty big question for all of you listening. What does this new understanding of the Great Pyramid's internal structure tell us about the ancient Egyptians? What did they know? What were they capable of? This is just the tip of the iceberg, really. This deep dive has opened up a whole new world of possibilities. What else might be hidden inside these ancient structures? What other secrets are waiting to be discovered? It's kind of mind-blowing to think about.
It definitely makes you rethink everything you thought you knew about ancient civilizations. <laughs> we have a lot more to learn, that's for sure. And thanks to these new technologies, we're finally starting to get a clearer picture of the past. That's a great point to end on. Thanks for joining us today for this fascinating deep dive into the Great Pyramid. Until next time. It's been a pleasure.